Hi, you're listening to Book Chat with author Vivian E. Moore. Welcome, everybody, to this week's episode. We really appreciate you joining us. This podcast really shows us how we can all learn, live, and thrive off of each other. By sharing our knowledge through our conversations, we will impart some knowledge whilst learning ourselves how to progress even further. Here is your host. Hello and welcome to Book Chat. I am host, author Viviani Moore. Hope everybody had a great week. I hope you're having a great weekend. Um, you know, I have to give you guys this the the daily um weather report or the or the weekly weather report. Um, you know, I know a lot of places, Texas and, and places that are like farther south than we are, uh, has just been in a in a frozen state uh for almost a week, if not more. I'm pretty sure it seems longer than that to them. But uh, we are, you can call us the sunshine state today because it's been just that beautiful outside. Um, it's still a little bit chilly. Um, I think it warmed up to maybe the mid 40s or something like that. But for the most part, it's, it's nice. It's nice outside. So um, without further ado, we're going to get right along to uh, today's show. All right. So the title of today's show is Use Your Words. And the topic is applying stronger writing techniques. So how often do we tell our kids to use your words when speaking? The same applies when writing story dialogue and why we must speak in tones and use complete phrases to eliminate all confusion to our readers. Using big words, and I'm doing an air quote, um, you know, they may make you sound super intelligent, but sometimes they still fall short um, of the desired effect. Use simpler terms instead. After all, readers appreciate a story more if the experience is made less complicated by using big words. The truth is readers desire substance and not really filler, you know, to impress them. They want less showy phrases and more meaningful dialogue to pull them deeper into the story instead of getting lost halfway through it. I've read a many of books where um sometimes the 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 um the length the lengthy dialogue was um was spot on. And then there were times when I just felt that it was just too much talking going on, you know, in between, um, um, well, I don't want to say the dialogue in between the dialogue, but the, but the narration was just a little bit too long. Um, and you got, you get lost, you know, you don't know what one character said when you have a long narration in between the response and a lot of times you have to go back and, and reread what you've already read just so you can understand, um, you know, what's going on. And, um, sometimes, you know, the, the, uh, a story, um, if the experience is, is made less complicated by using big words, then you, um, you gain a, a, a bigger audience that way. And, um, because they, they, um, overkill is just that. I'm sorry. I went blank there for a second, but I was trying to, to find my mental thought. Forgive me. Overkill is just that when you have too much narration in between dialogue and you can still say what you mean, but useless bulky phrases are like trying to fit size 10 feet into a size seven shoe. Uh, in other words, if it doesn't fit, don't force it. Okay. But you know, if you have nothing to say, say nothing at all, you know, that to me is the best advice I can give you. You know, if you're, if you're writing a story and, um, uh, or if you're telling a story, um, you know, sometimes less is more it, all the time. You don't need, um, you know, overlong again, narration 
to um, to get your point across. You just don't need that. So um, less is more. And writing should be filled with healthy material, you know, and, and not a lot of fluff like what you might find in the middle of a snack cake. You know, I know a lot of people like Twinkies, but you know that that cream filler that's in that's in the middle of that. You know, you don't want you don't want to fill your your um, your narration and 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 things with a lot of filler because um, again, the readers are savvy and they will see that straight away. And uh, you know, and and I know you want to be impressive. You know, you want to sh- you want to show your right and prowess. You know, to the reader and to um, you know to to impress them but you know a lot of times you don't have to do that they they would prefer a a, um a great written book you know opposed to you know just a lot of empty chatter that's going on because vague and and unnecessary long descriptive sentences are tiresome for readers they're tiresome for me you know i don't like writing them and sometimes you will have a long sentence but you know, try not to do that you know, on a regular basis because it's it's just not good, okay? So there's no need to travel fifty miles to reach the same destination, in other words. Specifically, um it is or specificity is the word I'm looking for, um, is better and doesn't require long run on sentences for direct and straightforward explanations. Just get to the point, you know. Take the take the the least path of resistance to get to the point. All right, so passive behavior is acceptable in real life, but can become tiresome when in when writing when you're writing or telling a story. Um, you don't want that that passive, um, you know, motion going on. Authors should maintain um, a level of excitement at all times to keep readers engaged and not bored out of their minds. Don't you just hate it when you're reading a book and it, it, it starts out exciting. And then once they get you into the story, it's when it sort of starts to decline just a little bit. And then you have to wait, you know, maybe to the, the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh or whatever chapter it is, you know, before it picks up again. So, um, you know, just, just as a practice, you know, you don't want to have conflict, you know, in, in, in every paragraph, but you want to keep it exciting. You want to keep it moving. You want to keep it fluid because that's important too. All right. And, and, um, and don't you just hate (laughs) people who ramble on without actually reaching the point. I can't stand that. I'm like, okay, so the point is, You know, you've said all that to say this. So what exactly are you saying? Well, you know, it's, it's, it, it just, it should act as a reminder never to do that when writing. And, and I don't recommend shortcuts, but in this case, keep it short and sweet. Okay. All right. So, uh, redundant words or explanations are like writer suicide for authors. And, you know, once you've introduced a character or detail into a story, Please don't feel like you need to keep it on repeat. You know, trust me, readers are savvy and they retain information well, whether you believe that or not. Um, you know, I'm one of those type readers that um, whatever happened at the beginning of the story, I don't care if this is an 800 page book, whatever happens at the beginning of that story, I remember it all the way through um, because that's important. It's essential. And it also... Um, you know, it, it also sort of pinpoints what type of writer, um, has written that book. You know, you, you sort of, um, you know, if you, if you've read more than one of their books before, um, you expect a certain kind of style, you know, uh, attributed to that, to that author or associated with that author. So, um, so, you know, those are all good points, but, um, but if you think that <laughs> that is necessary, uh, to repeat yourself, now I'm talking about authors, to eliminate fact-checking, well, that's a waste of time. It's a waste of valuable time because, you know, people that fact-check you, they're going to do it regardless, okay? So you just need to know that. Anyway, yes, because readers expect a level of continuity without needing to relive the moment repeatedly like an endless loop, you know? I don't need to hear the same sentence or phrase 50 times okay i got it the first time you said it 
I don't need to hear it again. If it's pertinent to the story, okay, fine. Well, that's good. You know, if you if it's a continuation story, sometimes, you know, you have to re reiterate, you know, certain things that, that transpired in a in an earlier story, you know, so that way it brings the reader up to date as to what's going on right now. You know, you want to keep the events current, but if you have to bring characters and situations over from one book to another one, then okay, so that's fine. You can do that. But finally, guys, we come to the last stage of the writing process, editing. And we know how important that is, um, you know, and, and we sometimes think of editing like a gut punch because it hurts, you know, um, to, to have it because we know every word is just precious and, and it makes it so hard to say goodbye to, uh, even when we know many of the words must go or simplified to tidy up the story. So, um, you know, think of it as um, editing as a surgical tool. We know that, um, you know, if you have a wound and in order for that wound to get better, sometimes it requires cutting. So that means if you have to, you know, cut some things, it's for the greater good of the story. So just remember it on those terms, okay? And all writing requires polishing, just like diamonds. One of the hardest substances fashioned from high temperatures and pressure. What does writing have to do with diamonds, you may ask? Well, like diamonds, stories undergo severe development necessary to become the gems readers love so much. And, um, and if you apply these writing techniques, I know you'll be successful and learn to use your words correctly to improve your overall writing skills. All right, folks. So that's the show for today. And before I let go, I want to make sure that I give you these URLs so you continue to listen to the show. And thank you so much, by the way, because I do appreciate, um, you know, the, the time taken out of your busy schedule to, to, you know, to listen to me. Um, you know, even if it is just for 15 minutes, I appreciate that. But anyway, um, if you want to, um, catch the show on Spreaker, um, that URL is HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.spreaker.com forward slash user forward slash author Vivian e. Moore. You can follow me, like me on, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and Instagram is by invitation only. Um, also, um, you can um, visit my website, which is at um, https colon forward slash forward slash www.authorvivianemore.com or authorehshepherd.com. And you can check out my blog, if you will. That is at uh, https colon vivianemore.blogspot.com. And uh, if you um, don't get a chance to listen to the live show, um, it is recorded so you can listen to the episodes to today's episode and any other previous episodes. Um, you can find them, of course, on Spreaker, um, Apple Podcast, uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Deezer, Podcast, Attic, Podchaser, YouTube, SoundCloud, Gile Saban, Audible.com, Verbal, spelled V-U-R-B-L, and luminary. Okay. So those are all the places where you can listen to book chat, um, on a weekly basis or every day, if you want to, that'd be great. So, uh, just fast forwarding a little bit in March, um, the first, uh, Saturday in March, uh, I will be conducting an interview. Um, and, uh, um, and I hope that you will tune in for that and I'm excited about it. Um, and I hope that you will be too, um, because I want to, um, begin that again, uh, having a uh, guest on the show talking about writing and, and, um, and this particular, um, author has a podcast similar to mine. So we're going to talk to, um, talk to my guest and, um, and learn a few things about, um, you know, his podcast and, and things of that nature. And I'll give you the details later, um, you know, as we get closer to that date. So, um, but one date I want you to, to keep in mind, and that's Worship Sunday. It just happens to be tomorrow. 
And so um, I want to make sure that, you know, that I always mention that because it's important to me. Worship is important to me. And I want it to be important to you as well. And, uh, you know, you should always, always, um, you know, if you can invite people to listen in, I know we're in the middle of a pandemic and you really don't want people coming into your house and you don't have to, you know, if you, if you listen to it live, you can just give them the, um, give them the information that they need so they can tune in, um, to live broadcast. You can post it on Facebook, maybe the day before, or maybe, you know, when you're going live or whatever, you know, so they can join in. And also, um, we do ours over the phone. So, um, you know, there's a number available. Um, if you would like to have it, then I will be glad to give it to you. So you can call, um, you can call and listen in to those, um, to those sermons, uh, those worship services that are taking place, um, in that fashion. And I know that a lot of people, um, have gone back to the, to the church houses, you know, to the building and, um, and I, and I pray and hope that they're being safe, you know, they're practicing, um, um, you know, the safe, um, habits of, uh, you know, staying at least six feet apart and wearing your mask and all of those things, because it's vital. Um, you know, I, I saw the report today where, um, I think it's over 1300 people, um, have been diagnosed just within this month. And, um, I think at least I don't want to, um, I think it's been right at a hundred or maybe a little bit less than that people who have passed away. Um, you know, that were diagnosed with having the, um, this, this virus. So please, 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 please be safe. And also tell people that you love them because tomorrow is not promised. Today may be the only chance you get to say that. So I love you. I hope you love me back until the next time you hear my voice. God bless you and goodbye. Loved what you've heard on this week's episode? Well, the answer is simple. It would mean the world to us if you could head over to iTunes and leave us a five-star review and feedback. Spreading the word really is the best way to grow our podcast and achieve even greater things. Thank you. Thank you.